Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session I am going to speak about SQL Server Operating System, which is simply SQL OS. Understanding SQL OS is very much crucial while both troubleshooting and maintaining SQL Server. Suppose suddenly your SQL Server started to perform very badly. Then you started to investigate and found out that the thread which is running your query are in one of the following waits for a long time and your query is not finishing. Then, of course, you try to understand the meaning of these waits. Let's see the meaning of source scheduler yield. This occurs when a task voluntarily yields a scheduler for other tasks to execute. During this wait, the task is waiting in the runnable queue for its content to be renewed, etc. Hmm. What is the meaning of voluntarily and how it happens? What is the yield scheduler? What is the runnable queue? Is this a Windows run runnable queue or queue inside SQL Server? What is quantum? Let's look at the meaning of async IO completion. This occurs when a task is waiting for asynchronous non-data IOs to finish. Asynchronous IO? How does this asynchronous IO done, right? Why SQL Server does async, async IO? Or last one, SQL Server operating system. Is it a separate system? Preemptive mode? Before switching to preemptive mode, in which mode it was? Why it should switch to preemptive mode, right? Then you spend a lot of time on understanding the meaning of this. You get depressed. You may feel SQL Server is just black box and hate it. In the meantime, the issue is happening out there and you should troubleshoot as soon as possible. In this session, you will find the answer to all of these kind of questions. You will understand how Windows and SQL Server works cooperatively in most efficient manner. You will know why and how waits occur, how each of your queries are scheduled and run on CPUs. This is very much crucial knowledge which you should know to understand, troubleshoot and maintain SQL Server issues. The agenda of this session is as follows. First, we will learn Windows internal architecture and important OS concepts like process, threads, scheduling. This is very much crucial part, please do not skip this point. Then. I'll share why we need SQL OS. And finally, we will learn how SQL OS works internally with Windows OS. Let's get started. Let's speak first about internal architecture of Windows. Firstly, we have process running on Windows. There are three types of processes, system, service, and user process. System process are fixed OS build process such as session manager or logon process. Service process are processes such as SQL Server, which run natively and independently of user logons in Windows. User process is a process created by a logon user, such as application process. The below is located subsystem DLLs, which provide Windows executive system and services to processes. There are some functions which can be implemented entirely inside subsystem DLL. In other words, process can just make function call and it can be returned to the caller by system DLL itself. Examples of such functions include get current process or get current process ID. The process ID does not change for a running process, so this is ID is retrieved from cached location. Very simple. However, Windows is just more than this kind of simple functions. Processes often call functions like read file, write file, which involve calling the underlying lower level Windows system services. This lower level include executives, kernel, device drivers, hardware like memory, disk, etc. As you can see, processes access hardware only through kernel. They cannot access directly. Engineers tend to divide this structure into two layers, user mode and kernel mode. We will get back to this architecture again later. Now, let's understand the process more deeply. We understand the SQL Server is one of the service processes, right? Actually, what is process? Process is a container for a set of resources used when executing sequence of program. For example, we know the SQL Server is a program or application, we can say, with sequence of instructions created by Microsoft, right? To run this program, process creates a container like environment. Process firstly consists of private virtual address space in memory, executable program, this is your application code, it is loaded to process, then security context, process ID, and at least one thread. Imagine that this is a SQL Server process, and this process is running on Windows. Now, if you run any query, what this process container do is, it runs a series of programming instructions, 
from the available loaded code. For this, it first defines how many tasks are required. If, for example, two tasks are required to complete this query, a separate thread is created for these two tasks. Then, this thread switch from user mode to kernel mode and executed or scheduled in CPU. This scheduling job is done by kernel. From this, we can understand that the thread is the smallest unit of execution to which CPU time is allocated. Now we understand what is process and what is thread. Now let's try to understand how threads are run in CPU. Before moving forward, let's brush up on some CPU concepts so that you can understand the next parts of the session. First, the system consists of CPU sockets. Here, there are four sockets, and each socket also can contain cores. And each core, one thread, can be run at one specific time. So, for example, if you have 10 cores, you can run 10 threads in parallel. One point also. Nowadays, each core itself can contain logical processors. For example, if each core contains two logical processors, this core can run in two threads simultaneously. If we summarize, we will have following picture. On each of these logical CPU, thread is scheduled. Therefore, the more cores and logical processors, the better for performance, because you can run many threads in parallel, right? So, in real life, there are hundreds of threads which should be scheduled on CPU. Each core or logical CPU should schedule several threads at a time. How do they do that? Let's take an example from one logical CPU case. For example, there are 10 threads assigned to one logical processor. Firstly, you should understand that each logical CPU has its own queues called running, ready, and waiting queues. There are other queues also, but they are not important now to consider. Every time a thread is run, CPU assigns this thread to running queue and this thread state becomes running in Windows. Other threads wait in ready queue for their turn. They can be also in other queues, but eventually come to ready queue and run with their turn on CPU. So, each running thread is assigned time to run. We call this quantum. When quantum expires, this running thread is put to the end of ready queue and the first thread in ready queue is moved to running queue and run. We call this stop as preemption. Every thread in Windows are preempted and preemptable and cannot do dominate the CPU for a long time. Now we understand how Windows works at high level. Let's now discuss why and how SQL OS has been created. Before SQL OS, each SQL Server thread was run on Windows OS as other process thread. The thread had to switch to kernel mode, scheduled by kernel on CPU, preempted when quantum finishes. This was a little bit problematic for SQL Server. We cannot take SQL Server threads as other system threads because SQL Server works differently from OS. Okay. For example, you are taking, uh, you are running very important query, and suddenly OS uh, preempts this thread and causes some, some kind of latency. Therefore, in order to avoid switching to kernel mode whenever possible, avoid contact switch as much as possible, and support asynchronous I/O, and at the same time give thread control to SQL Server, SQL OS has been created. SQL OS is an additional DLLs called SQL DK and SQL OS. These DLLs have provided SQL Server its own scheduling mechanism. In this way, SQL Server does not depend on OS scheduling. If any thread is scheduled by SQL Server, it is first scheduled in SQL OS, then correspondingly submitted to kernel mode if hardware access is needed. Let's see this in detail how it works. This is the same structure, just a little simplified. As we discussed before, Windows CPU can have several cores and logical CPUs, right? SQL OS also cre creates its own CPUs, which we call schedulers, for each of these logical CPUs in parallel. Let's take one of the CPU and see how threads are scheduled. The same applies to all other CPUs, okay? As we discussed earlier, to schedule threads, each CPU has its own queues. SQL OS also has queues, which we call list. There is worker list, runner list, waiter list, IO list, and timer list. Worker list can be equal to thread list. This is the available threads to run your query. Suppose you started index rebuild job, which requires IO operation, and select query, which does not need IO operation, since 
the data already in the buffer cache. These tasks are assigned to scheduler 1 and thread 1 and 2 are allocated for these tasks. Thread 1 is for index rebuild. Then these threads are moved from worker list to runnable list. So these workers should run on CPU, right? How does it happen? First, they are assigned a yield point, which is equal to quantum. Yield point is assigned by SQL OS and quantum is assigned by Windows OS. For example, SQL Server assigns yield point like Worker 1, yield when you did 100 row index rebuild from total 10 million rows. Worker 2, yield when you select 100 rows from two, uh, 20 million rows to bring. As you can see, OS is not setting quantum, but SQL Server is setting quantum, which is a yield point. Okay, In this way, SQL Server is controlling quantum. SQL Server is controlling when the thread should be preempted. Then SQL Server sends this worker as a thread to OS CPU ready queue and this worker thread is run until its yield point, what was it? Yield when you did 100 row index rebuild from total 10 million rows, right? Please pay attention. Only one worker is sent at a time. SQL Server does not send more than one worker. Therefore, worker 2 waits in SQL OS its turn on runnable queue. So worker is on CPU. It should wait its turn because there are other threads. As you can see, OS schedules this worker after one thread one and thread two. This causes a little bit latency, right? Therefore, Microsoft always recommends not to run many processes and applications on SQL Server node to keep CPU available and prevent this kind of latency. Okay, now suppose worker one's turn came and it is moved to running queue and run. But it cannot run there for a long time. If it cannot finish its yield point within OS Quantum, it is preempted and moved back to ready queue again. This process will continue until yield point is reached and worker 2 waits on the SQL OS runnable list. We understand that index rebuild is IO intensive job, right? SQL Server should bring data from disk to memory. This I.O. operation is done by SQL Server asynchronously. What I mean is, when I.O. task is there, Work1 just creates OS I.O. task and goes back to SQL OS I.O. list and wait I.O. task completion. Afterwards, SQL OS assigns I.O. related wait type to this thread, for example, async I.O. completion. Now we understand how I.O. related waits occur. If you face any asynchronous I.O. related wait, you should think that this worker is in I.O. list waiting for I.O. task in OS to be finished. If the thread waits in I.O. list for a long time, you have I.O. subsystem issue. Okay, your I.O. subsystem means slow. Okay, this is asynchronous I.O. and this is done asynchronously in order to prevent I.O. related worker to take CPU time. Now I hope you understand what is asynchronous I.O. and how it is done, right? Okay, then, since worker 1 is moved to SQL OS, worker 2 is scheduled on CPU in the same way and runs until it reaches yielding point. After yielding point is reached, it goes back to runnable list. There is one important point also. Before going to runnable list, every thread does one thing. They check waiter list, I.O. list, timer list. If workers completed their task in these lists, they are moved to runnable list by this returning worker. For example, worker 1 got notified from OS that I.O. task finished, right? Imagine. Therefore, worker 2 moves worker 1 thread to runnable queue. In this way, I.O. list, timer list, and waiter list are clean. Since SQL Server started other queries, we have workers 3 and 4 already in runnable queue, and they are also run in the same way on CPU until the yield point. Now imagine worker 3 is being run in OS and other threads are waiting in runnable list. SQL Server assigns source scheduler yield wait type to each of these workers in the runnable list. Let's look at the meaning of this wait type one more time. Do you understand it now? 
waiter list works the same as IO list. All these threads come here when they wait for other resources other than IO, like memory, log, etc. Right? SQL Server assigns wait type to each thread located in this each list. Okay? Remember. Now we understand how waits occur, how SQL Server OS assigns workers to CPU. Next time when you face waits, please remember this internal structure and how SQL OS works. This will help you to grab and understand what is going on in your server. Last point. Worker threads being created in SQL OS are called as non-preemptive threads. Why? Because threads are not being preempted by SQL OS until they yield point. All other threads being created outside the SQL OS, like thread 1 and thread 2 here, are preemptive threads. At given point, SQL Server records what threads are being run in both preemptive and non-preemptive mode. I think it is every 5 minutes, okay? For this, we go to System Health Check. Click on Server Diagnostic and go to Query Processing. Here, threads are divided into preemptive and non-preemptive, right? We can see how long each thread is waiting by looking at average wait time. This is milliseconds. Since my system is very healthy, we don't see so big figures. You can check max workers available out of which how many workers have been used and how many staying idle okay from here if you want to know what is cpu usage at this time you can go to system and check os cpu and sql os cpu here okay let's also look at workers threads and and task information For this we run this query and as you can see my session id is 74 therefore i says 74 here then i find worker address then thread address you can see that this task is being run on this worker and on this thread I hope that you find this session useful and it will help you while troubleshooting performance issues. Do not forget to subscribe for my future videos. Thank you.